Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Stitching Tales. I am Johanna Lundström. And I am Malena Jarpe. And in today's episode, uh, we wanted to talk a bit about content and all the different channels that we have that we can provide content and trying to reach more a larger audience and of course the, the ones that are already following us. So Malena, you, you had this topic idea, so I'm curious about what, what are your thoughts around it and your struggles? Um, well, for me, content creating is, it doesn't come natural. I, I kind of struggle with it and to know what to write and how to write is and, and what to write where, because now previously I was basically only on uh, Instagram, uh, but now I got my website as well, uh, with a blog, um, and now I got a newsletter. Yay. Um, so I'm like, what am I, what am I supposed to write where? And, um. I want to find like a good structure for how to work with it in a good and smart uh, way uh, because I'm, uh, as I said before, I'm not a designer. So coming up with ideas can be really tricky for me. But if I have like a very strict like framework, like something to work from, then I can can be creative. But uh I don't have that at the moment. So I'm just like, oh, what should I write? Okay, today, uh, oh yeah, I got that idea. So then I just do it. And, but you know, it doesn't, I don't get a flow uh, in working with it. So I want to pick your brains a little bit and uh, ask how you are working uh, with uh, content making. Because you, you got this. <laughs> you have been working <laughs> a lot with uh, content creating for several years, right? Yeah, yeah. I honestly don't feel like I maybe have got it, but at least I have worked a lot with content creation. I I don't know how many blog posts I have. I mean, it's closing in on a thousand blog posts probably over the years. So, yeah, and about 200 YouTube videos and such. So, yeah, I've been pretty productive, but but I agree with you. It's very important to have this kind of flow because it's it's really, really difficult to create all this content. And so I'm just curious, which channels are you currently using and, and have also the ones that you've been thinking about moving forward? Um, so, so far, I'm uh, mostly on Instagram. Uh, but uh, now recently, I just like relaunched uh, a new website. So I want to uh, start working on the blog there. Um, so then it's like, what should I write on the blog and what should I write on Instagram? And, uh, and then, of course, uh, I want to send out a newsletter, maybe like every other month, I think would be realistic for me. Um, so it's mainly those three channels. And then I also, I have created a Pinterest account that I also want to uh, work with, uh, but I only like updated just a few uh, pictures there yet. I haven't really gotten uh, the time and like to focus on that one. But I, I really like the idea of, of Pinterest and uh, I work, I mean, I do it on like, when I have my own like um, private projects <laughs> or uh, things, then I look through Pinterest quite a lot. So I want to do it on also from uh, like a business uh, perspective. Mm. So it's mainly those those four channels I have. I'm not big into videos. That feels like I would like to, but it's just like too much for me right now. I barely am able to create content for these four channels. So videos are like, no, <laughs> not at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's also, I mean, it's challenging and it's also really time consuming. So it's, it's so, so hard to excel on in every area. And I think a lot of people that are successful are, are focusing mainly on one pri primary channel and then maybe they can repurpose content for other channels. And, uh, I think what's interesting because that we discussed in the episode about newsletter, which is episode five, if you want to listen, uh, we talked about the fact that if you're starting a newsletter, you need to have some kind of home for the, the main content. So the newsletter is more like a, a reader's digest of interesting stuff that you can read the full, full version on, on the blog. Or of course, if you have a YouTube channel, you can also do the same that you have a newsletter where you share your latest videos or, or similar things. But a newsletter is hard to to link to like content on Instagram. Maybe you could link to real maybe, but it's, it's not the same thing. So uh, the way I do it mostly is that I often, um, I build like an umbrella of, of a, a specific content topic. So 
And then I tried to repurpose that in different channels. And uh, I, I often do it the old school way that I actually start with the blog post. And the reason for that is, first of all, I really enjoy blogging, which I know not everyone does. So I, I understand that. But and the good thing about starting with the blog post is that you have that automatic reference when you're doing a newsletter, because then you have provided like a full text article that you can link through. And the thing is that uh, I don't know, no, no, I don't think everyone really understands the value of distributing because when you put so much work into a blog post, maybe a tutorial or something else, then if Google can be helpful, of course, uh, but you also need to get it to other eyeballs and two big eyeballs are f Facebook, Facebook, your Facebook page, uh, so that you should link you should post your new blog post on that Facebook page because that is actually a good traffic generator because people are more prone to leave Facebook to go over to a website than they are if you link to that store in stories on Instagram because Instagram it's its own very secluded environment so people are not as prone as clicking on link on Instagram um, than on Facebook. And secondly, Pinterest is also a distributor of tutorials so you can do create a pin image for your tutorial. So if you find that, you can go back. So just by doing that and the fact that you have a newsletter. So you have both Google, you have Facebook, you have Pinterest and you have the newsletter. So all of a sudden you have lots of different ways of attracting people to your content on the blog post, which means that you will reach a much larger audience than you would on say Instagram. So. That's my reasoning behind why I think it's so important to start with a blog post and then you can use repurpose content and snippets from that to create for me for me I, of course I do videos on my for my pop, pop, most popular blog post but uh so I think it's 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 good to go back to the old school way <laughs> I I cuz that you I think if you do hard work it it pays off even though it's very daunting to to start, which I think is for you a bit of a struggle right now, that it's a bit overwhelming, the, that part of the the long form content. And Yeah, and I really like it, but um, I, um, I have actually had a blog uh, for quite a long time. I mean, earlier uh, when I lived abroad, I used to blog a lot just to keep my family and uh, friends updated. Um, I, I do like the format of a blog, like you can write longer text and Instagram is so, you have to keep it so short and it's a little bit tricky to, you know, I want to talk about this picture and then, you know, you have to swipe in Instagram, but the, in the blog you can actually really write it close. I mean, yeah, you, you can set it up in a totally different way. So I really, I'm looking forward actually to start uh, writing blogs oh. again. Uh, oh. It's just the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't, I, yeah. I need to dedicate time to sit down and actually do it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, no. And I also have a Facebook page. That I forgot about it. That's how much I use it, basically. But uh, how do you use your fa Facebook page? Is it just straight copy, like the blog post there, or how, how do you how do you do? Yeah, I. I have Actually, I'm very hands off on my Facebook page. So what I do is that there are a few uh, publishing um, apps or, or programs. I think if if some of you are doing more of a professional thing on Instagram, you probably use a program called Later, uh, which is fine. It's good for Instagram. But what I do is that I use a program called SmarterQ. It has a really awful interface, but what it does is that it, Every time I create a new blog post, I add it to that library, to that queue. So that, and then I set a schedule. So, which, so it it rotates. So the the post keeps on posting. Uh, maybe I think it's maybe like every third month. So because I have so much content, so there's it's no re, um, there's no problem that people will get like fatigued with the same type of content. So. Of course, if you only have five blog posts, you can't use that system to, uh, but you can at least, you can just set the date, maybe repost it like uh, once every six months or anything like that. So for me, so what I do is just that I, I um, add the link in, in the program 
uh, I write a small caption uh, for, and then I set it, and then I forget it. So that's how I I work with it. So sometimes I forget because now I have like five really good tutorials that I've forgotten to to post into SmarterQ. But when I do, uh, I get a, a nice chunk of traffic from Facebook users. And I'm not a big presence on Facebook, but people can kind of find me. I think it's you get recommended pages. As it's just it's just. Uh, it's just, oh, uh, I mean, Instagram is, is growing much faster and the Facebook is not, but uh, for our type of content, one shouldn't like uh, ignore Facebook, I think. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's easier. Yeah, you get suggested a lot of things f- from Facebook. So uh, in that sense, it's very easy to find new new groups that you like or pages that you like. So that makes um, total sense. But how do you... Uh, because I struggle with this, like really, like from step one, how do you save pictures to remember where to save them? Like, what are your fold system in your computer, and how how do you write your text? Uh, like, do you save them also on your computer, or do you write it st- straight onto the blog? Hmm. Well, that's a really great question. So I have. Uh... I use uh, both Google Drive and Dropbox, so I pay for both services. But uh, for my uh, blog photos, I use Dropbox. Uh, so now, yeah, I pay for both. So it's just it's just a hassle to move it around. But but the good thing is, of course, that I can access it from anywhere. I mean, my I have two different computers. I can access it from my work computer. I can access it from my mobile phone. So what I do is basically, I think it's it's good. Maybe if you have so many that you you start with the, the the top level is the year, but I don't. So I just uh, write, uh, create a new folder which have the text of uh, what I I imagine the blog post will be about, like the head headline, and then I use um, it's a bit more advanced, but I'm using uh, Adobe Lightroom, which is a great b- batch processor f- program for the photos. So. Instead of working with Photoshop one on one, I can just do a preset and then everything I can set exactly the grid size, like file size and everything. And then I also for search give the file name the same name as the folder and the tutorial. So for instance, if I'm doing a curved waistband t- sewing tutorial. Uh, the images will be named curved band sewing tutorial one two three four five. So that makes it also easy for Google, but it also makes it easy for me if I want to find it later. So I I, I have one folder for each blog post, roughly. Yeah, and then I have some. Oh, sorry, what do you mean with the Google? Like yeah. when you Google Drive, where you save it, or no, like Google yeah, like search, search engine? Search engine, yes. Because okay, yeah, because I of didn't course, know. It, yeah, it's gonna it. Uh, maybe I think it's much more refined now, but but of course, you know, if you go to the the picture picture um, tab, it's it. I think it helps. It, it, maybe it. Uh, I think it just helps a little bit. I, I wouldn't like count on it, but it's just also. But the, the thing is that it's also really good because when you have lots of images later on, it's so nice that when you search for a file, you will find it because you have been so consistent. It's not called image one two three four five or dsc one two three four five so that's that's why i'm very i'm I'm i don't uh, i'm very specific about that particular organization i'm I'm sure other people have better organization but it works for me and i have so many blog posts well that's uh, that's good to know yeah because i right now i'm basically saving my pictures everything in one file and then also of of course like sub um, sub files with like all the pictures from a specific okay this is when i took that top pictures um or t-shirt pictures and have it in that specific uh, folder uh, folder then um but then i've and it's fine when you do it all in the same way but then i have those few when it's like okay but those photos were for a sewing tutorial so i have saved them in the folders under the pdf file where i have all those and then it becomes tricky because then the pictures are like saved different uh, in different folders, different uh, categories. So then, yeah, mm, that's yeah. when it becomes a bit of a hassle to keep track of them. 
Yeah, I understand that. So what I do, if I do a sew along, for instance, for a new pattern, uh, I, I, I put it in the blog post folder and then I name the the mother folder like sew along AV cardigan, AV cardigan sew along. And then I create subfolders. So for instance, in one folder, I have images for hemming, one for the sleeves, if, because usually you do more than one post if you're doing a sew along you can maybe do three or four or five different posts so i have a folder for each separate post because otherwise it's also going to be a bit overwhelming to to find everything and how do you do them with the text yeah so what i do with the text is that uh i i use wordpress which i know that you don't because you're on on wix now uh but i think it's worked the same way because now because we're writing in English and English is unfortunately <laughs> not the first language. So, you know, it, it's going to be a, a struggle sometimes. So uh, I use a tool that there's a free version called Grammarly. So what you can do is either just open the Grammarly app uh, and just get an account and write it there and then copy paste. Or the Grammarly also works as a plugin. So if you're opening your uh, blog... Um, uh, you, you you log into your blog and, and start a new page in, in, in Google Chrome or whatever browser you're using. Um, it, you, the Grammarly will help you keep track uh, on, on spelling and grammatical errors in the, just like you would have in auto, like autocorrect if you have uh, several languages when you're using Google. I mean, you can have this like um, spell check. It, it works the same way. So and of course you can the, the regular Google, but what I what I prefer with the Grammarly is because grammar is quite hard. <laughs> I think everyone who studied language is would would be agree on that. So it's easy when you when you're born with a language because then you have this like uh, automatic you hear you can't explain it, but you hear when it's right and it's wrong. But unfortunately, with English, even though we we study English as s- small children in in Sweden and Finland, we still don't have. Uh, there are still some things, at least I, I, I know you have worked uh, abroad, Maliana, you work in, in global companies, but it's still a little bit hard, right, to get English great. From- yeah, 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 of <laughs> course, yeah. And it's just those those specific words, also how the spelling, tough though thought, those are always like, wait, how, which which one was which now? <laughs> yeah, and where and where and... Uh- <laughs> Yeah, and also sometimes uh, getting the uh, the S right uh, if something lie or lies uh, that can so there are a few things like that and you can also with Grammarly pick if you want to use American English, UK English, Australian English, or uh, or British English. So it's it's uh, it's good because then it will automatically uh, show if you're spelling. Because I think a lot of us mix uh, British English with uh, US English. Uh, so sometimes we use uh, realize with an S and sometimes we use realize with a Z. So it's it's hard to stay consistent. <laughs> That's on another level. Uh, as long as it's English for me, I'm fine with it. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> it's funny though, because some people do note, note that, I can assure you. Yeah, especially I, I, it's, it's, a, it's a topic. <laughs> Especially I can imagine. I, yeah, I. I <laughs> but do you when, use uh, but do you use that only for like checking like grammar, spelling, those kind of things? Then yeah. And the great thing about Grammarly is that because, uh, for instance, when I'm doing my sewing books, I always use the premium Grammarly uh, subscription, and it has lots of suggestions on how to reframe your um, uh, your sentences and for clarity. And everything like that, so it's super helpful. And it's also now have an AI uh, function, so you can like ask, uh, help me uh, st- write an introduction for a blog post about how to alter a s- top, or maybe. So you have to be a little bit more specific, but so it gives some decent suggestions, uh, so they can also use. So I'm I'm a big fan of Grammarly. Uh, highly recommend it for anyone listening who, and I know I know a lot of. Um, people who are native speakers in English also use Grammarly because, you know, it, it's hard. Grammar is hard. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Definitely. But do you save uh, when you're done with the actual text? Do you save it somewhere or do you just straight to the blog? Yeah, yeah, straight to the blog. I would actually say that I, if I write about 80% straight to the blog, 
you just have to make sure that you have an auto save uh, function because it's that that will happen eventually that your your browser will crash and then you have lost it so I think the good good way of doing it is using maybe Grammarly or Google Docs or some other type of like cloud based because uh, Grammarly you can save all your files as well. But for me, it's just too much hassle. It's, the images is enough to organize, so I, I'm not that precious about the 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 blog text. I just usually write it straight to the the in in the in the browser or the blog. But you said um, in some previous episode, but maybe it was about newsletter then, uh, that you so you easily can send out like a similar uh, newsletter that you sent out earlier year. How do you save? What kind of structure do you have there? Uh, that that in the newsletter, I also write the, it from scratch in my newsletter software. I'm using MailerLite, which I know that you you gotten too, right? So yes. it's it's just that then it just saves your all your old um, emails. So and you can also save them as templates so you can repurpose just part of it. So I don't really touch um that but the good thing is about cuz sometimes writing is the hardest part but once you figure out a way of like communicating what you want to say there's no need to reinvent the wheel. So for instance if I'm doing a newsletter about a blog post, I'm not going to start writing from scratch a different type of introduction. Maybe I change the word or two, but I, I usually just do copy paste. So for me, once the thinking process is done, then, you know, I, I definitely want to make sure that I use it as much as possible. It could be a caption to an Instagram post as well. I mean, you know, it doesn't really matter if it's the same. No one is going to notice anyway. Oh, but that sounds, um, sounds convenient. Yeah, because you don't have to reinventing the wheel every single time. That that's the thing that uh, if you do it on uh, multiple, like on a regular basis, like uh, it just goes a little bit smoother. Then, um, and that's really what I want to to achieve someday. Yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed. Yeah, and I think you will. It's just it it's just a training thing. It's it's like you have to like activate other parts of your brains that you're not really used to doing because. Because what I alluded to in the beginning of this episode is that I would say that I am very good at uh, thinking about systems and producing content and having like a very holistic perspective. But that doesn't mean that I am able to execute it all the time. And I, I know that when I'm really systematic and do a lot of planning and are very much into like a consistent content creation... I'm just so much more quicker and I'm I'm always seeing like the ways I can repurpose content. But if I'm like have taken a break and it's about to start again, then I, I can very much relate to the, what at where you are right now, Malena, because I have the same challenges, even though I'm, I'm also I should perhaps you don't know, but I'm a journalist by trade and I work in communications now. So what I do like all day, every day, <laughs> it's just producing content, just writing, 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 writing. So for me, uh, if I, it's, it's, you have to, it's like with the muscle memory, you know, you have to keep it going because the more you do it, the better you get it. But so it's just that little hurdle uh, that you have to get over in the start, I think, and then it's going to be so much easier for you. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I hope for that. And uh, Pinterest, how do you, do you have Pinterest? Yes, I have. Pinterest, yeah. How do you work with that? Uh, I Pinterest uh, is is a good thing um, to have. I guess you, you can use Pinterest for many different ways. Uh, Pinterest has changed a lot, but initially, I think a lot of um, people used uh, Pinterest as as a brand to um, uh, drive traffic to your content, regardless if you're selling clothes or if you're having sewing tutorials, you you just create those pin images and you do that because when people visit your site and they, they love a tutorial, they want to pin it to a board and then they, they will obviously pin, you know, whatever image that comes up. So it might not be the most helpful one, but when you're also pinning yourself, you can pick which image or you can create a graphic specifically for Pinterest that shows with text and, and the image what the, the tutorial is about. So that's Traditional has been the the biggest way of doing uh, Pinterest for bloggers, 
And then, of course, you can have uh, patterns, uh, image of your patterns that go straight to your shop. I know there there are more e-commerce options as well. And I, Pinterest also now have a similar function as Reels. So if you do a video, you can basically, I think, repurpose it for both, of course, Reels. You can do it on Facebook. You can do it on TikTok. You can do it on YouTube Shorts and Pinterest. So from my understanding, the formatting is very similar. So that that's also a, a thing you can use it for. And it's probably much more because I'm not really staying on top of Pinterest, but, but I know it's, it's a, it's a very powerful tool because it has a lot of options and also it's less, um, uh, how should I say it's less demanding because now you can comment, but it's not like a social network. If you mean, it's more like a distribution and inspiration network. So it's, it, it requires very little maintenance compared to say Instagram, for instance. And uh, maybe a stupid question then, but if you write, say, a blog post and you have several pictures there, um, how do you do to get them to Pinterest then? I mean, do you use the same file and just add them to the blog and then add it to the Pinterest? Or do you, <coughs> sorry, do you like pin the blog post? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. So what you do is that you, just like with the, uh, the Grammarly uh, app, you just add an extension to your browser. So then you just uh, right click on the image that you want to share uh, to your account on Pinterest. And then uh, it automatically links to your account. And then I think you sometimes, depending, sometimes you the, the picture that you right click is the one that is shared. Otherwise you have to pick because you get like a window of five or six images. And then, uh, Pinterest imports the, uh, I think the headline and the, uh, the first paragraph of the blog post. So you can use tags, hashtags, and things like that. If you want to do more advanced stuff, but it's, it, as I said, it's, it's like, it's basically just a right click and a second click. <laughs> you have to like click two times and then it's done. So it's extremely smooth. And the thing is, it's it's the easiest thing, and I I have now a backlog of probably ten tutorials which I haven't done this on. So and then of course people will of course also. So when I go into my pin, Pinterest stats, I can see that the the most popular pins are people that have randomly pinned some image. Uh, so I don't I don't have control of everything, but yeah, it's, Pinterest is a, has been an extremely important uh, traffic tool for me. Uh, and if uh, people, if, if other people p pin your pictures, do, do they still like, does the link to your uh, blog post automatically happen? Yeah. Or? yeah okay. Yeah. Mm. It's just that maybe they have like a picture that isn't like relevant because they just pin it to their own board, but it kind of gets, becomes the motherboard. So for the mother image. So I, I think there are ways of, uh, how shall I say, how to stop people from pinning less uh, helpful images. But I think that you, some plugin you have to get, or maybe it's included in your, in the Wix uh, interface. I don't know, but it, it, it's a little bit of an issue, uh, of course. Well, that's um, good to know that I don't need to specifically add that picture and like rewrite something link to the blog post and like you can do it in a, in a better way. Yeah, it's very simple. I, I don't think it's you have to do any anything else uh, just for the, just getting started. I mean, this you can always do high level stuff, but I mean, I think good is better than perfect. I mean, done is better than the perfect. <laughs> done I mean. is better than perfect, yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. because, That's my motto. So, yeah, you're very good at that. I, I, I have more issues with that, but I, I, I should at least give you that, that advice right now <laughs> because it, it's very yeah. helpful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, when it comes to like social media writing, it's like, okay, there the bar is done. Done is better than perfect. Just get something out. <laughs> I, I love the idea of good is better than perfect. That's, that's, <laughs> like, <laughs> that's a new, that's a new tagline. That's the tagline for our podcast. Good is better than perfect. <laughs> yeah, it could be a new thing. <laughs> But do you have any like uh, goals or like uh, how many post uh, posts you want per month or per week uh, for your blog or for Instagram? Do you have any anything like how consistent do you try to be? 
Mm, oh, that's a great question. I should say that for uh, several years, I was very consistent that I posted on the blog two times a week, uh, a video on YouTube uh, once a week, and Instagram about two to three times a week in, in the feed because the stories, of course, stories as well, but, you know, reels and, and stuff weren't a thing back then. Um, everything has gone to the wayside. <laughs> I, don't know. I have absolutely no consistency on, on any of those platforms right now. But yeah, of course, if you post more, you grow more. I think that's, that's the... Uh, so, yeah, maybe... I try to think on my blog, I would say now, because I'm, I'm doing quite a lot of blog posts, it's, it's just it's definitely more than one one a month. It's probably about two, two or three, uh, which I think is a great number, especially now, because, I mean, who, who else is bl sewing blogging? Not many. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's not that, it's not swamped with new content that you have to fight through. So <laughs> I think it's just the bigger, the bigger businesses, sewing businesses, that they are the ones doing uh, like sewing blogs and of course a few, few uh, hobbyists as well, but it, it's nothing like it was uh, 10 years ago. Yeah. And uh, how do you decide uh, like uh, the actual content, what to write about? How do you, how do you come up with uh, topics? Mm, it's a basic, it's a combination of uh, things that I like to write about and things that I know are successful. So I think you should, uh, you need to find that sweet spot because it's, it's, if you just, because it, it, it takes a lot of time to create a blog post with all the images and the text and formatting and everything. So I think you need to, to find something that you are, you like to write about. I think that's, that's helpful. Um, so I, I write about things that I know is popular, but I also have a personal interest in. And, and not all my blog posts are like, it's just sometimes I just show makes that I've done because I like to do that. I like to take photos. I love to like do the styling. And that those are, of course, not my most read posts. It's just because I enjoy it. No, but that sounds good. Yeah, because you have to have those passion products yeah. <laughs> every now and then. Uh, that uh, is not the most advanced tutorial ever it could just be something like yeah i like this <laughs> yeah i think so and you i love i love because um, we uh as if you don't know we're both based in sweden and sweden had has had a, a very strong blogging culture not particularly with sewing but you know uh, there are people that are f making a very nice full-time living of uh doing blogs and and uh, several of those has kept going and uh, I think it's uh, it's been amazing what they have managed to achieve by having the blog as their main hub and then like doing other things on other platforms. So I, to me, it's very inspiring to see the blog is not dead, even though you might feel it is because everyone left the sewing blogs for Instagram, for instance. Uh, but yeah, it, it's still, I think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a... Uh, an, an important format to to keep keep working on as, as long as search on instagram is not that helpful and, and yeah i think that's the huge benefit with uh, blogs that uh, if you search for something that uh, then you can actually find old really old uh, blog posts but still relevant because uh, the topic is uh, i mean tutorials will i mean forever be relevant uh, sewing technique doesn't get old you know Mm. So yeah, it makes makes total sense, and uh, it was so funny because I've uh, I had my uh, blog, um, my old one on uh, like patternbymalena.com. Um, I actually had some posts about uh, fitting uh, issues, and then the, uh, I didn't update the blog like uh, you know behind the scene updates, uh, so it wasn't working anymore. And then one reader actually contacted me on Instagram and was like. Why is not your not blog not working? I've said that uh, I've said that post because uh, I like go back to it a lot now and I want to share it with a friend. I was like, oh, somebody actually like <laughs> read and like saved it. So uh, then I did a lot of updates. But now I moved all my posts to to my new uh, website. So mm. um, so I mean that's really. It's encouraging to make new posts about uh, because uh, I guess. 
sewing tutorials and fitting problems. I mean, those are like the best thing you can blog about because yeah. the, you, people search about those constantly. It will exactly. never get old. No, it's going gonna, it's gonna to stay relevant for, for 10 years. So do you have any uh, posts now? Because you have already a lot of contents, but are you considering creating some new posts now? And, and what type of topics have you thought about doing? Yeah, so I have, uh, I mean, in my mind, I'm like planning a lot of blog posts. Um, I think, first of all, like an introduction of me, um, like who I am, what I do, um, which I also will link to my newsletter, since uh, I think I have a lot of new followers there on the newsletter that I don't have on uh, my Instagram account. Um, so I want to give like a presentation of my, uh, myself, basically. And then I'm thinking like, I have like uh, nine uh, PDF patterns now. So, I mean, create posts about each patterns um, with uh, so uh, pattern hacks, uh, how to update them, how to how to make them. I have many basic garments, but how to how to make small changes and get like a new style from that. Um, and also, well, about uh, each pattern as well, you I could do, I mean, how many posts like <laughs> about yeah. fitting issues like if you want to do this adjustment I, I talk I mean we have talked a lot about that in the book obviously mm -hmm. but uh, go really deep uh, dig deeper uh, into yeah. each specific uh, issues um, so I mean there is just like you could write how many blog posts I mean we wrote a book about it so you can write how many blog posts like <laughs> it's just a matter of time and uh, how much energy you want to put into it um, yeah. So I was thinking a little bit like having having like, okay, well, first I take the Hazel Hen uh, t-shirt uh, and write some uh, pattern hacks about that, some uh, adjust fitting adjustments and uh, package that also and make it into a newsletter once mm -hmm. I'm done and uh, done the blog post. So I got, and also I talked to this, uh, to, to my sister actually, um, uh, I, was, I was home uh, last weekend and uh, she also gave like a great uh, tip that, uh, but you know, like uh, we just went on a skiing holiday and uh, sewing a merino like under layer. Um, I mean, that could be a great thing to do with uh, your t-shirt uh, uh, pattern. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that's really good. Um, but you know, then I have to sew the sample, take photos and you know, it just takes time. And she was like, well, I mean, you don't have to sew, like take a picture. You can just like, give inspiration and uh, fabric recommendation and like you can do this kind of uh, garments as well and I was like right yeah <laughs> you don't actually have to make a sample on everything you write good I'm taking yeah. notes I'm taking notes and I was like okay yes fabric fabric recommendations print recommendation color recommendations for this season I mean, yeah, no, you don't have to actually make and take your own photos and samples and because that's, I think, the most time consuming part. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, now I have so many ideas of what to write, what to do. But um, right now in my headspace, I'm all focusing on uh, my next PDF pattern, Bilberry Top and... Uh, so I'm not really there yet. I can't sit yeah. down and start writing right now. Uh, but, but everything is like marinating. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got ideas. I, yes, you have so many ideas. And I think it's going to be absolutely wonderful. And I, you, I, I love your ideas. And you're, you're, I think you're spot on. And I think like uh, the phone line, their newsletter have the sewing, the trends. I mean, you can just, uh, as you say, if, if some type of fabric or print becomes popular you can show some new fabrics in shops and just you know as an inspiration for how to like update your patterns for a specific trend so i think it's it's so it's so helpful to do that and and that's also a wonderful way of producing content for the newsletter as well uh like ideas how to update your uh, hazel and t-shirt pattern for instance because it's such a versatile it can be an active wear top it can be a dressier top it can be like as you say a merino top so it, it you have so many different options it could be a pyjama top i mean you have all these options because it's such a versatile uh pattern so i i your sister was absolutely brilliant in that recommendation uh and another thing also is good that if you're 
doing, for instance, like a theme on different pa pattern hacks, it's very easy to organize. So you can create, it's used, I think it's used to be called sneeze pages. It's one of like sneeze when you're, you're sneezing. Uh, it's, you have this collection. So, and that's automatically, you can tell, tell, uh, you can automatically organize it. So it creates a separate pages. So for instance, I have separate pages. So for instance, my uh, so long, um, uh, blog post, for instance, if, if uh, it's linked in every, every post. So if you click that, you get like a view with, with theater image for each, each and different blog post. So it's a nice way of collecting visually. So I have, you know, tutorial pages for all my jeans posts and videos. For instance, I have one of those and I have one for my uh, cover stitch material. So it's a really nice way of organizing things because especially as you already have all the blog posts, you can actually do a little bit behind the scenes stuff and, and try to organize them in a way that becomes easier for the reader to go, go deeper and find more material than just a single post because you also want people to stay in your ecosystem as long as possible. Yeah, that's a really good point. I um, I haven't really, I haven't figured it out yet how to do it uh, on Wix. Um, and I could barely ish not uh, do it at all when I was on uh, WordPress. Uh, so it's just that that's more of a technical issue for me to figure out how to how to do it. Because yeah, categories is like, I mean, so convenient for a, for a reader to be able to just you know, choose the fitting issues, topics, and then you get all those posts, um, uh, like easier to, to find them. Um, so yeah, that's definitely on my, on my long to-do list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Rome wasn't built in one day, as they say in Sweden, maybe it's a saying in other countries as well. <laughs> Yeah, and it's like, yeah, you you can you can do whatever you focus on, but like, yeah, yeah, I can only focus on one thing at a time. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah it is, and that's the hard part because ideally you would have to have this wonderful. My my most successful peers in life is is when I had themed days, but that also requires, like, you have a lot of energy and 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 not too many other things going on in your life. But I used to have like a five day schedule. And even though when I was having like a full time day job, I was still having a couple of days, like marked one for admin, one for the blog, one for YouTube. And that really helped me. So it was like a visual reminder that that I, what 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 thing I, I was working on. And then I had one day for product development, for instance, a book or a new sewing pattern. Uh, but of course the thing is, as I think what you're describing now, because you're, you're working so hard and on finishing your, uh, next pattern you get, because it's so much easier to work when you're in a steady flow, because as we talked about in a previous episode, if you have to do all this task switching, it becomes quite stressful and it's hard to go back. You have to, okay. So how was I, how was I supposed to format the pattern now? It's much easier if you just keep on doing it until it's done than having to go back and try to remember all the different uh, ways to do things. So it's a, it's a little bit tricky that way, because I, I think that's probably one of the, the struggles when, when you are a solo entrepreneur, as they say, uh, to, to actually be able to wear all these hats and not get like totally scatterbrained and super stressed out. Yeah. And I heard, um, I mean, bigger, um, people on Instagram like uh, the has really big accounts that they said that no but once once a week one day a week I I uh, solely focus on content creating and it makes total sense I mean you should have that like on a regular basis because then you can also produce content on a more regular basis to actually have one day a week or yeah how much time you want to spend on it um so I know that's like what I should do <laughs> but I don't not right now. Yeah, I also, I think maybe we should dig a little bit deeper in that because it, it's just not the task switching. It's also because it's a resistance because you're not as uh, mo motivated. Your you're, you're happy place and where you feel the most comfortable is in pattern development because that's your profession, that's your skill. So every time you have to venture out of that, there will be a slight resistance, right? So mm. of course, if you have because you're running your own business, then you have no boss telling you what to do on a specific day. Of course, 
we're all going to gravitate to to where we feel the least resistance, right? Mm. So we can argue as much as we want, but that's probably one of the reasons why we we don't want to do it because it it just takes much more mental capacity and it, it feels a bit uncomfortable compared to some other tasks that we really enjoy. Yeah, no, definitely, hundred percent agree agree with that. But what have you? Uh, what content are you planning on for the for the future now? Yeah, I I need to do everything because I <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting on everything. But actually, so I, so my my point right now is that I need to focus on the, the things that gives me the most traction, and which I have talked about in previous episode. Newsletter is extremely effective compared to other type of uh, content that I uh, do. So my main goal right now is to have a consistent publishing schedule for my newsletter every other week. I have, as I said, hundreds and hundreds of sewing tutorials. I can just go back into the libraries, repackage things, share that stuff. I have so many videos I can share. Uh, So I just, I, I can... Pick. I have no no problem in, in pr- getting like 25 different topic ideas for the year. Uh, that's a no-brainer, actually. So I just need to start doing that. So that's my, my main priority. And But I should say that creating a good newsletter, it does take a time because uh, yesterday I, I basically spent all afternoon uh, creating content, doing image formatting and writing text uh, uh, for... Um, a newsletter uh, with with some quick hacks from our book Fit for Knits. So yeah, it takes it takes a lot of time. But then again, I can see now that uh, yesterday I published it uh, in around five o'clock here in Sweden. So it was early morning in in North America. And uh, first, I had some sales unrelated to the book, but through the email for, for my sewing patterns. And then I can see on Amazon that uh, both. In the UK and the Amazon US, I could see that the the sales stats for our book was going up quite a lot and has stayed consistent. I think now it's dropping a little bit. It's it's uh, almost 24 hours later. But yeah, it's very, very clear. Um, how should I say? There's a clear connection between posting a newsletter and getting a desired result. Whereas if I post... Uh, maybe um, a story about our book, for instance, I don't see that kind of sales spikes uh, for our books. So for me, that's what I'm kind of thinking. Of. And, and and secondly, I sh- I, what I should be doing more is YouTube because that is also one of the most effective uh, channels for me because, and, and that's something I plan on, on starting again more consistently. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's my, I, I would probably never kill it on Instagram, to be honest. I, 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 I mean, I, I know it's growing and it's going to be more and more important. And I think we have to get on TikTok soon too, uh, producing reels and everything, you know, like really it's, it's everything. But right now, because we, we are so small <laughs> and have other jobs as well, I, 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 I'm going to go a bit old school right now uh, until I, ha- I have to force myself to do other stuff. <laughs> but you are still, I mean... I think uh, you say you don't do so much on Instagram, but I think you're more active than me there, uh, which maybe says something about me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, um, if you're happy so on it's in the blog and uh, you see like instant effect when you send out newsletters and you obviously have... All your like most of your your followings are on YouTube. I mean, it makes total sense for you to focus on that. You don't have to be. I mean, there's no law like you have to be on Instagram if you have a business. Like that's not. It doesn't have to be your main focus. And especially mm. when you so much talk about the algorithm. Like we don't have really control of what is shown to whom. So I mean. It makes total sense to focus on, you can control the newsletters, you can control YouTube in a completely different way. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, don't feel bad that you don't are that active on Instagram. It, you, you, like, you don't have to be. Uh, I, that's, that's nice to hear because I sometimes feel so stressed out about, you know, dropping the balls on all these kind of channels. Uh because you always feel like you have to do this exact dance of doing everything. Because if you're not, you feel like you're missing out on something. 
uh, but that's also like a recipe of getting burned out about the whole thing. So yeah, you're very you're very right, and I think we we talk about that a lot, like understanding your limitations in in every area and just work with those instead of trying to be everywhere and and to create top level content everywhere. That's it's it's impossible. Um, so yeah, uh, and I, I also got really inspired by discussing this today. As I said, I I, I have a good understanding, but I, I'm not always executing it. So I feel just talking with you like this, I, I got some new ideas on how I want to uh, repurpose and reorganize some of my content because I, I'm, I'm definitely not always doing the things I say we should all do. <laughs> We know what what we need to do. It's getting it done that is the difficult part. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny because everyone, I, I'm probably feel like that, but you don't really hear many people talk about this because you always hear, it's very like a polished, uh, oh, you should post uh, this uh, on this platform three times a day or this is how you grow your audience on this or that. But uh, we're... It's like as as if everything was that easy that you would be able to do exactly what you should do when you're just a person trying to run everything and not burning out and like still enjoy it and so it's there's a like a gap between the the idea of what you're supposed to be doing and the realities of trying to make that happen so which is actually impossible. <laughs> yeah, no definitely you have to you have to set the bar at at a reasonable like level um what, what is what is manageable to do and that's uh, that's a lot why we i find this so interesting to talk about because um we work hard but we work we need to work hard in a smart way because otherwise it's just going to be like for example with the pinterest i would i didn't know exactly how to how to do it so i would upload the image separately from my blog and like have to rewrite things and just to hear that no you can do it in a more efficient smart way like those program talk to each other um i mean that's gonna save me a lot of time so i can focus on other things so that's really yeah. it's really helpful yeah yeah it is and it's there are so many different apps now as well i mean because I'm just talking from my experience, there there might be apps that can automatically post uh, your preferred pin from Instagram or whatever. I mean, I'm, there's so many options, absolutely. So if you can just, uh, and that's one of my, speaking of um, streamlining things, it's one of my, uh, on my to-do list is to start um, broad uh, uploading, because we talked about Reels, which I don't do that many, but I have done a few that I think are really good. Uh, there, there's no reason for me not to post them on YouTube shorts. I should definitely post them on Instagram as well. So I'm, I'm going to try now to see if I, what type of apps it's got, can do this for me. Because the problem is with all this, like we talked about SmartQ, Later, uh, there are lots of different publishing tools. They, they all have their limitations, so it's really difficult to just have um, to just s settle for one, and also of course we should say that Facebook or, or Meta they have their own content publishing system within Facebook, so you can post both on Instagram and on the Facebook feed. It's just that I I absolutely hate the interface. It uh, I should I should do explicit words here, but you can imagine what I was going to say, and. It absolutely sucks. It's, it's horrible and I use it in my day job. And if, if something is too painful to use, I, I, I don't want to use it. So they, it, they make it, I don't know, maybe you have a different experience. But So there are free versions you can use it, but uh, it's, uh, it's a disaster. <laughs> They're changing it every time. Every, every, every quarter they have changed something and it's, it's changed names. So you don't know how to use it or where to find it. Sorry for the rant, but that's my <laughs> that's my thoughts on, on the meta publishing tools. <laughs> but um, that um, you listening, do you like our listeners? Do you have any tips for us? Like write us a comment. We should say that you can either write it in our uh, here on YouTube if you listen uh, to us on the YouTube channel, and we also have an Instagram account now. 
um, that you can uh, post uh, if you have any tips, tricks, or your best ideas or suggestions, questions. Uh, we would love to hear from you. So the Instagram is uh, Stitching Tales Pod, right? Yes, Stitching yes. Tales Pod. So <laughs> there's a post for each episode. So you can also, if you're listening to older episodes, you can just go there and and write comments because what we're doing on on that uh, Instagram account is also that we because most of you listening are listening and and so you sometimes we talk about a lot of different things but it's hard to show but if you go over to our Instagram account Stitch and Tales Pod we have uh, uploaded images so you can see visually a lot of the things that we are talking about which I think is a really helpful companion to to this pod so. And also it's a way if you're not using YouTube as Madana says that you can actually interact with us and, and give us some ideas and suggestions and so keep the discussion going there on City Tales Pods. Of course it's gonna be linked in the the show notes for this pod as well, for sure. We're gonna make sure that happens. So it's a soft launch now. <laughs> we have done a poor job at pitching it, speaking of doing great marketing, but it's there, so <laughs> and we're gonna keep updating it. Yeah, definitely. All right then. Well, thank you so much for listening. I am Johanna Lundström. And I am Malena Jarpe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.